All right, so welcome to this tour then of Oxygen OS 11 on the OnePlus 8 series. This is a OnePlus 8 Pro, but if you've got a OnePlus 8, everything will look exactly the same, save for a few features which are not there on the camera app, purely because of the fact it's got less cameras. So this is the new always on display feature and it's a really good addition. Yes, we've been waiting years for it, but it's better late than never and I think the, the whole thing has been implemented very well. So you can choose from a number of clocks which are in the customization menu, which I'll show you a bit later on. But this is basically evolved from the old lift to wake ambient display, which was in Oxygen OS 10. So you get the clock, which you can actually switch off and then you can have your notifications, your battery status, this little personalized message you see here, as well as any music that's playing, any built-in application, and things like location, uh, which is being used by another app, the microphone being used by another app, whether the screen recorder is running, there's plenty of things that you'll see on this screen, which is really good. Now you can also click the power button and this takes you to the lock screen, which again will show you contextual information with your chosen wallpaper. But I just want to show you how you navigate out of the screen and how you do that. So you just simply click on it and it'll show the fingerprint reader. Click on that and then it takes you straight to your home screen. Now what I don't want to do in this video is drone on about the fact that some elements look like they've been borrowed from One UI. We don't know that for a fact, but it does seem that that is the case. I'm assuming most people have come here to see Oxygen OS 11, not hear me bang on about the politics of who copied who. So I do recognize that some elements do look the same, but I'm not going to talk about it anymore in this video. It's up to you what you think of that. So everything you see here has actually been done with the OnePlus launcher. Now, nothing really much has changed in, in the launcher itself, so you can still pinch away and you've still got these settings here then, which you can use to customize the home screen. You can click on this little icon here and it actually auto arranges your icons to all fill the screen, or you can click it back and then it goes to your chosen personalized setting. One thing I'm keen to stress to a lot of people is the whole One UI thing, maybe people were worried that the performance has changed or the whole entire look of Oxygen OS has changed. Absolutely not true. There's maybe three or four screens which look very similar to Samsung's UI. But the rest of it is all Oxygen OS and the actual fluidity and the, the way that the phone works is all exactly the same and unchanged. And once you get into the deeper menus, then you'll see that not really that much has changed at all. So I think the biggest difference I think is this here, the spacing of the quick toggle menu has been uh, greatly expanded. So instead of everything being bunched up a little bit, you've now got more space to play with, which is really nice. If I just show you the OnePlus Nord as a side by side, yes, this phone is smaller, but you can see that the uh, spacing seems to be a lot more and they've got these nice white on black icons as well, which looks really smart. You can see there that the alarm and the notification status has now been moved off to the right on Oxygen OS 11, whereas with Oxygen OS 10, it's stuck at the top of the icons. But with 11, you can see that the date is being tucked over into the top left-hand corner. So that is one of the changes that you'll see. Now, if I go into the settings, this is where you'll see one of the biggest visual changes. So you can see you've got this really big uh, blank space at the top of the screen there, but it's being designed for one-handed use. So even with Nord, which has got a more compact display, you still kind of have to readjust your grip or use another hand. But with Oxygen OS 11, you can see that the top menu is easily accessible with one hand. My problem with this though is that it's inconsistent. So if I click on Wi-Fi network, you can see that all of the other options in the sub menu have been pushed up to the top of the screen. It would have been far better if they continued this theme here. So you've got this big blank space here, which I don't mind at all with the big bold font and then repeat that in this screen and push everything to the bottom. That would have been much more consistent. I'm not sure whether it's intentional, but if it is, it's very misjudged, and I think it's a big mistake to do it like that because it would be better if everything followed in every single submenu. And you can see that it continues as you go down every single submenu, which is a shame. But looking through this, if you see when you go into each submenu, everything is unchanged from Oxygen OS 10. The only thing I've noticed is, is that even if you've got the display scaling set to smallest, so screen size set to small and text size set to small, everything does seem to be a lot bigger in my opinion. So the Nord here is set to smallest and you can see that everything on the Oxygen OS 11 side of things does seem to be blown up a little bit more. I'm sure I'll get used to it over time and I have done over the last few days, but it's one thing I did notice and a few others that I've spoken to as well. 
Now, I'm not going to show you all of the different sub menus because a lot of these are completely unchanged from Oxygen OS 10 and are also Android OS specific, so nothing really has changed there. The main differences are in the display and customization and also the look of the OnePlus apps, which I'll show you a little bit later on. So when you go into display now, everything else here is pretty much the same. But when you go into ambient display, you've now got the always on display option, which has been tucked here in the middle. So you can see here that the lift to wake and the ambient, ambient display or always on rather, all share the same settings. So you can pick up the phone to show, you can tap the screen to show, and then you've got your contextual info, which you can actually toggle on and off if need be. And also they took the horizon light here into this setting as well, as well as into customization. So you can go in there and you can pick whichever color you want for the horizon light, which is cool. Now one thing is you can't actually switch the horizon light off. So it's kind of built into all of this and can't actually be knocked off. So when you go into the always on display, you can switch it off, set it to be scheduled to switch on at certain times to switch off. And then you've got, got it running all day long if need be. So as I said, everything else in here is the same and nothing else has changed. But if you go into customization, there's a few changes now which do affect the always on display. So OnePlus have added two new wallpapers. You've got this nice purple one here and they've got this really smart animated one which I showed you at the start there. So I'll just show you the clocks that are available. So you've got the default clock, which again has got a nice typeface and good font. That was carried over from the OnePlus 7 Pro which had these in its last beta release. You've then got this new one here which is Insight and I'll just show you how this looks on the lock screen. So you can see now that this shows the concurrent amount of unlocks you've done on your handset since the day has started. Now one good thing about this is no matter what time of day you actually select this wallpaper it remembers uh, how many unlocks you've done prior to actually activating this wallpaper which is really cool. It's like the phone's got its own built-in clock which remembers what you've done. So that's a nice, neat feature. And it kind of goes along this bar across the screen. Now with this particular clock face and also the others, what you'll find is they'll move around the screen to stop any burning when the phone is running the always on display, which is a cool feature. So we'll just come out of there and just go back into customization. So we've also got these text clock here, which is quite nice. You've also got this Apple Watch inspired one here. I don't actually know if it's inspired by Apple Watch, but it does look quite similar. Then you've got some digital clocks. And then you've got these analog watch faces here, which do look quite smart. You've then got these minimalist clocks here as well. And then, as I said at the start of the video, you can actually have no clock, but still have contextual information on the screen if you wish. My favorite is this one. Again, it looks very much like something from an Apple Watch, but it does look really smart because it's got a nice, big, bold typeface and it looks really striking on that really dark AMOLED display. The fingerprint animations haven't changed. I could have sworn there was an additional one added in here. I don't know which one it was, but I think this energy one wasn't there before, but I can't be sure it might just be me going mad. The one I prefer is none, no animation at all, because it does seem to make the fingerprint a little bit faster. If we then move across, the horizon light is there as well, but nothing has changed. There's no new colors on that one. And then we've got these accent colors here. There's a new one being added, which is the uh, black and red, but if you use the dark theme, it goes white and red, which is really smart. So if I do that now, just to give you an idea of how it looks, click on dark mode in the toggle, and you'll see it's turned white and red instead of white and black. So we'll continue the rest of the tour in this dark mode. Now one small quirk I found in this particular section is just with the wallpapers. It's no biggie and it's no big, big deal breaker. But when you select a wallpaper, Logic would suggest you go straight back to the customization section. But when you click save, it just takes you straight to your home screen. Now it's no biggie. You can just do one step back with your recent apps menu and it takes you back here. But it's just one thing I noticed which will probably, probably be tidied up in a future developer preview or the stable release whenever that will be. Uh, and underneath there then you've got control over the system icons as you can see there these haven't been changed there's no nothing nothing new there and then we've got control over your icon pack so anything you've downloaded for free or purchased from the play store you can see here and when you click on them you get a live preview of how it will look with your currently selected wallpaper as well if you want to buy some more just click on the basket and it takes you straight into the play store icon section which is great and then finally then we've got the font selection so we've got the old noto sans in there uh, instead of the old Roboto, we've now moved to OnePlus Sans, which is a nice looking font and it's applied 
throughout the entire system UI, which is great. So we'll just save that. And that is everything in the display and customization sections, which has been added. Like I said, everything else you see here is very Android specific and there's nothing else being added, which is new. So that's cool. So we'll come out of there then. And I'm gonna show you now the OnePlus system apps, which are actually baked into the phone itself. Uh, so most of these have had the look applied across all of them. So everything you see in the settings menu, for example, the font and the way it looks has all been applied to most of these system applications. So the first one is the calculator. This does what it says on the tin. It adds up, it subtracts, it times, it divides, etc. You can even do, um, you know, scientific stuff like that as well by clicking on this toggle at the bottom. The problem I have with it is it does look a little bit strange. Um, they haven't quite finished it because the uh, calculator icon here or the font has actually disappeared up behind the nav bar at the top here which is or status bar sorry which looks a little bit strange and you can see the divide icon is also the same so this needs a little bit of tidying up and it goes back to what I was saying about the text is just a little bit too big for my liking like as if the DPI is increased without scaling the rest of the screen. So then we've got the camera. So I'm gonna be doing a full review of the OnePlus 8 Pro camera. So I won't go to, to, into every menu here because the only things that have really changed are for video. Now I would have liked to have seen the OnePlus Sans font actually continued throughout the entire camera menu, but I suppose that's something which can be changed in a future release. So the first one is portrait video mode. So this is also known as video bokeh uh, on things like Samsung and Huawei. It's actually more impressive than I thought it was going to be. Uh, given OnePlus's track record with camera stuff, I thought it was going to be a bit pants, but it's actually really impressive. The big change is, is that it doesn't record in 4K at 30 frames per second now, it records at 1080p 30. When recording in 4K in a previous video I did for this, it did overheat the phone quite a bit. The phone would still work, but it would reduce some of its functions because the phone was getting quite hot. I did a few tests at 1080p 30, it doesn't get as hot so quickly, which is a good thing. Now the second one is Nightscape. Now I do suspect this is actually just a placeholder. Uh, when you record in Nightscape mode, it doesn't look any better in the dark than it does with the standard video modes. So something tells me this is either a feature which is gonna be coming to the OnePlus 8 Pro later on, or it's a placeholder for the 8T series, which is coming, I think, in October. But as it stands, it doesn't actually do anything different at the moment. And the other thing you get is video uh, focus tracking. So you can toggle this on or off. And basically uh, when you're using video, so if I just point over here and just click on the handles for the door, if I move the camera around, you can see that the focus stays the same wherever you move the camera, which is a cool feature. So that's all of the things which have changed for the camera. Uh, if you've got a OnePlus 8, uh, and you're using this, then there may be things which are missing because obviously it doesn't have as many cameras. Okay, so next then is the clock and you can see this has had the, the new UI throughout it as well. So whenever you select it, you can see the new font and everything looks nice and big. It's a nice application and it looks smart in my opinion. Okay, so out of there then, we've then got contacts. So you can see again, this follows the same visual style, which is nice. The only one that hasn't been changed yet is the file manager. So this doesn't follow the design language, but again, I'm sure this will be updated in good time. They've got game space. So this has had the new font put it on and these new little system icons as well, which have changed slightly from Oxygen OS 10. And the gallery. Now this is quite a big change for those of you used to the old OnePlus gallery. So everything now is divided into sections. So these are all your photos and videos in time and date order. You can also pinch back to zoom. This does look a little bit like photos on iOS, but there's only so many, many ways you can actually do something like this. It also looks a little bit like Google Photos as well. It's quite smart and I think the way they've done it does look quite nice. Now there's been some talk in closed groups that I'm in that it does look a little bit scruffy. So if I could just go to the top here, if I move over to the second tab, you can see this doesn't really line up with the rest of the photos. Uh, so it does look a little bit disjointed, but again, it does what it's supposed to, and I can't really see that being a big deal for a lot of people, unless you're very detail oriented like I know some people are. So when you go to this part here, you've got all your collections. So if you've got different apps installed on your phone, for example, Snapseed or Lightroom or PowerDirector, for example, like I've got here, then everything is grouped neatly into collections. It looks a bit busy for my liking, uh, but you can get around and get what you need to without any trouble. 
and you can also then go across to explore and this is very much like highlights on Google Photos and it adds things as it goes along, which is great. And then in collections, you can also add a folder if you like, title that, and then you can put things into a new collection. So they've got the messaging application. And again, this follows the design language, including the font. And again, it looks really nice. And I think it looks quite smart with its new typeface there. So again, you've got the one-handed operation you can see there. OnePlus Switch uh, hasn't really changed that much. Again, this will probably be updated, but it looks pretty much the same as on Oxygen OS 10. But for the sake of completeness, this is how it looks. And the recorder, that's been updated as well. You've got this uh, funky guy here with a really small head. And you've got the option to just click record straight away and delete. Or you've got options to choose AAC or the higher quality WAV format. So voice recorder, and that's all it is, but it does work well and it looks quite nice with the new font type. And then finally, we've got the new weather application. So again, this looks a bit busy for my liking, but it's a nice welcome change, I think. And it does look quite smart in some areas. Um, it's a weather app at the end of the day, and it just tells you the weather. There's been some talk, again, in closed groups about the fact it's not very accurate, and it seems to tell the same sort of weather for anywhere else in the world. Um, it's... The data, in all fairness, is actually pulled from the Weather Channel, so whether that's OnePlus's fault or not, I don't know. But I think this could be tidied up a bit just to look a little bit neater. But it's uh, it's a nice addition to the overall software package. And again, a lot of people may find a lot of value in this, but that is the last app to show you within the OnePlus apps. All right, so the final thing to show you then is the Zen Mode. So Zen Mode now has been improved. So instead of it being just a sole application, you can now also use group Zen mode. So you can actually create a room and a few of you can join in. You can all have a big collective Zen mode all at once. All right, so that's the end of my look then at Oxygen OS 11 on the OnePlus 8 series. I think it's a move in the right direction. Yes, there are some similarities with One UI, but it doesn't actually extend to skin deep in Oxygen OS. And I think it's a welcome move forward for OnePlus who've been kind of stuck on the same design for quite some time. But you let me know what you think of the changes to Oxygen OS 11 down in the comments and whether you think it's the right decision or not. So if you've got any comments or any questions about anything you've seen in the video, then please do let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, if you're new around here, then please do consider subscribing so you don't miss more content coming on the channel very, very soon. But for now, this has been my look at Oxygen OS 11 for the OnePlus 8 series. My name's Dave West and I'll catch you guys later.